You may not know, but some of the tech you see in today's modern cars have actually been available for over 50 years. Today I'll be showing you five bizarre cars you probably have never heard of and were decades ahead of their time. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Christian. If you enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe for weekly automotive content. Now, let's begin. Coming in at number one, seemingly straight out of an episode of the Jetsons, is the 1959 Cadillac Cyclone XP74. With its distinct bubble dome canopy indicative of the 50s America styling, the Cyclone has a whole host of features that would make you think its designer Harley Earl was a time traveler from the future. She boasted a powerful 325 horsepower engine, rear mounted automatic transmission, all wheel independent suspension system, had exhaust that poured it out in front of the wheels, and had those innovatively designed headlamps that would flip down from out of the grill. Here's where it gets even more interesting though. When you look at this car, you'll notice right away it has these eye catching cylinders running down both sides. Of it. This feature was for more than just aesthetic purposes. This is where the radar for the collision avoidance system was housed. Yeah, that's right, I just said collision avoidance system. I'll wait a few seconds to let that sink in. This car was so ahead of its time that it had a collision avoidance system that would actually warn you of objects up ahead and calculate it based on speed you were going, how long it would take you to stop in order for you to avoid hitting it. It's hard to believe now when watching commercials for new cars bragging about these new collision avoidance systems coming standard with them that this has already been done, and so long ago too. The Cadillac Cyclone is certainly a standout for its pioneering blend of exquisite beauty inside and out and its groundbreaking technological achievements. In the era of the newly developed atomic bomb, Harley Earl working with GM decides to fire back with his 1953 General Motors Firebird XP21. This wagon of mass desire was the world's first ever gas turbine car. Harvey Earl, the eccentric time traveler he was, decided to take the same engine that was currently allowing air crash to take humans past the speed of sound for the first time in history history and stick it in a car. This little aviation inspired toy packed a whopping 370 horsepower, which by today's standard isn't too much, but in 1953 that was a pretty big deal. This was one of only a handful of cars at the time that could reach the ever so elusive 200 miles per hour mark, which certainly captured the public's attention for achieving this feat. This concept car was designed and produced in an era where Americans were absolutely obsessed with aviation and rocketry, which was reflected in car designs at the time. You'll see this aviation inspired theme repeat a few times on this list. But this bad Mamba Jamba is the only car that looked like, drove like, but also sounded like a jet. Hell, it pretty much was a jet. Its only real downfall is that it was over-engineered out of practicality because of course flying through town at 200 miles per hour while creating a sonic boom with your world-fired turbo-powered gas turbine engine was a reality we all rather live without, even though each and one of us would marvel at the thought of owning and driving our very own land missile car. Would a standard cop car in 1953 even have a chance of catching up with one of these to issue its driver a ticket? Next up on the list we'll be reeling it back into the tamer side of things. This car surely isn't a physics defined speed record breaking death machine but offered a level of clash, luxury and elegance unrivaled in its day. I'm talking of course about the 1936 Stout Scarab. This car was not only the first minivan but also the only minivan ever created that didn't scream I've given up on life and trying to get laid. All jokes aside, the Scarab was not well received when it came out and was considered ugly. Over time, however, this gem ended up becoming a hallmark of art deco design. It was built around a living room on wheels concept and took comfort to a new level in automobiles. Its front seats would rotate 360 degrees, the back seat would fold out into a couch which also had a table that folded out in conjunction with it, creating a very cozy atmosphere perfect for relaxing at pit stops on long car rides. It also had a very low floor plan in order to maximize the room inside of it which was the crown and detail that really allowed the Scarab to achieve its living room on wheels mission. They say to be great is to be misunderstood and I guess this saying holds true when discussing the Scarab. It was just too ahead of its time to really be appreciated and for the public to yearn for a vehicle more suited for living on the road. We wouldn't see this type of vehicle become popular for about 10 years and it would take another 30 for them to catch up to Scarab when it came to comfort and amenities. If you couldn't tell already by some of the other cars on this list, America was obsessed with aviation in the 1950s and incorporated aircraft inspiration in cars quite often. This next car is no exception to the trend, but arguably did it in a more eye-catching fashion than anyone else. Say hello to the 1956 Buick Centurion. Among its other futuristic design features, one of Buick Centurion's most notable is its transparent roof. This was perfectly executed when it was paired with front and rear vents to allow cool air to flow through the car in order to combat its rapidly rising temperatures from all the UV rays coming through the roof. It also had specially designed hubcats that would intake air while moving and direct them to the brakes cooling them and increasing their stopping capabilities. The feature that really earned the Centurion a spot on this list was its backup camera. This car had no mirrors and relied solely on its backup camera that we wouldn't start seeing 
seen as a standard option again for about 50 years. If that's not crazy enough, this car also had no gas tank either, not because it was electric or solar powered, but because it was purely a concept car that never saw a functional one be made. It's a real shame too because I would love to live in a world where the Buick Centurion was mass produced. Now before you nitpickers leave your comments, yes, I realize Buick made a Centurion from 1971 to 1973, but this was a completely different car that only utilized the same name as the one I'm talking about. This next car would be an odd man out of the list because of how young it is compared to the others, but its place here was certainly merited due to just one futuristic feature. I'm talking about the 1986 Buick Ferreira. This was the very first car to come standard with a touchscreen. No, I didn't misspeak, a freaking touchscreen. This in itself is such a mind-blowing feature for a 1986 vehicle, but it gets way more intense the more you dive into it. Yeah, sure, it did cool things like control the radio, climate control, and what have you. But this screen also had a trip odometer, would tell you how much gas was in the car, check your brake pad status, and even do a vehicle diagnostics test for you. These are features we're used to seeing on today's Tesla, but a Buick from the 80s? This hidden little gem was truly back from the future. The screen or the graphical control center as they coined it was a tube design, so essentially this was just a small TV they jammed into the interior of the car. The screen was actually pretty big, but because of its tube design, it was pretty bulky and cumbersome. But hey, it was the 80s, wasn't everything like that? Obviously, the graphical control system was held as a groundbreaking step towards technological luxury, but it was also heavily criticized for being a negligent driving distraction. Funny to think how this little screen could cause so much controversy as a driving distraction in a day and age where drivers are constantly tapping out novel-sized text messages while driving. Unfortunately, the Rivera sales plunged in 1990 and then it's lined far too soon. The sales drop was not contributed to the graphical control system but rather a variety of factors at the time. It's really a shame too because think of all the groundbreaking features Buick could have created since then if they kept the line and focused in on keeping it technologically revolutionary. Well guys that was the video if you enjoyed it make sure and drop a like. If you want to see more make sure to subscribe with notifications on that way you don't miss out on my next video. I would love to know what you guys think about the cars featured on this video. Which one was the most surprising one? Make sure and comment below and let me know. As always thanks for watching. Till next time.